stops Motion got me all faded My heart Got me going all crazy And I Won't be walking away Well, good morning YouTube. Um, welcome to a, a cold and slightly dull day in the UK. Um, it's that time of year again. Oh, it's not that time of year again. It's that time of mileage again. Um, as you know, I like to change the oil in the S3 every 5,000 or so miles. Um, always done that, um, especially because it's a high performance motor. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's nice to keep on top of the maintenance. Uh, so today it's a quick oil change. Um, I've got a lot on this weekend, so um, I was going to nip over to a friend's garage and put it on the ramp and do it, but uh, because uh, time is limited today, it's um, it's going to be done on the drive as normal. So uh, join me. We're going to get set up, uh, get the car jacked up, and then uh, we'll get the oil drained and I'll take you through it. Um, I know I've done this before. Uh, I think it was sometime last year, but uh, I'll try and give you a bit more in-depth detail and um, who knows it might be useful to somebody or it might just be a really boring video but uh, anyway catch you in a minute so we're all jacked up and uh, ready to go um, <laughs> by the way if you wonder what the blue mats are uh, I used to teach martial arts on my own club years ago and these were the mats we used to train on they are jigsaw mats 25 mil absolutely brilliant for doing this because you can see we've got granite all over the driveway um, so, right, we are jacked up, there's a jack under there, and obviously a jack under the other side. Now, I did get a comment last time I did this, that um, A, I, uh, the axle stands were doing absolutely nothing, and I'm a big advocate of axle stands, but what I use them for is not to hold the car up, I use them as a backup. Uh, as we know, bottle jacks, especially, are notorious for letting go, and, and you can get it with trolley jacks as well, so what they do, I put them in places where if the pressure goes it'll go down to the axle stands it will stop so although it maybe look like they're not actually doing anything they're there as a backup they're there as protection they're there to stop a ton and a half of metal coming down on my back so that's why they're there um, so what I'm going to do now is take the bottom plastic off which anybody that's got an Audi will know is a bit of a pain but uh, Ironically, this one being plastic, and every other Audi one I've had has been plastic, but on the wife's car that you saw uh, move out shot at the beginning of the video, and that's got a metal one. Very bizarre. But anyway, let's get some tools, and let's get that bottom panel off. Now, regular viewers to my channel will know I'm not uh, paid to do these videos. I'm not sponsored. There's no uh, advertising going on. But today, I'm going to try these out. Um, I got fed up with basically... Um, the gloves I used to have ripping all the time. So these ones are apparently um, quite strong. So we'll give them a go. I'll let you know what they're like. Well, they went on me right ripping. I look like some sort of Avenger now. <laughs> or an Undertaker. One or two. Right, stop waffling Reeves. Get this panel off. So as you can see that's pretty easy um, there's a bank of screws I hope you can see this down that side and a bank of screws down that side as well and then it just slips in to the front here and when you got that off it uncovers this which is where your oil filter is and obviously at the back um, you've got the drain plug so next job is to get the oil drained now what I was told last time and uh, I was querying it because under this cap here, let me just screw this off, if you can see this okay, there seems to be a valve. Now apparently, I'm not sure how you do it, that valve there um, lets the oil out. Um, and again, I'm not sure if you push something up inside or, or whether you need a special LD tool, which is quite possible, but uh, yeah, apparently that's a drain valve. So I'm going to look at that when I take the oil filter off. But uh, yeah, let's get the oil drained and um, get on with it. So just for reference, the back plug is a 19 mil.
Cheers, YouTube. That's a good cup of coffee. So, as I say, YouTube land, um, I did have a comment last time when I posted uh, my oil change online about this little beauty here. Now, when you look at it, it's... Um, <laughs> well, it confused me. I'll be totally honest. It's something alien to me. But apparently, it is a drain for before you take off the uh, oil filter. Now, also, last time somebody said, oh, you've got oil all over your gearbox. Um, yeah, okay, um, that wipes off. So we're not going to worry too much about that one. But I'll be interested to see what happens here. So this is uncharted territory. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to do that, um, and that seems to make, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm a bit nervous about this, I'd rather just unscrew it and let the oil drop out, um, but I'm going to persevere, um, that screwdriver's no good, should have picked a better one, give me a second, I'm going to see if I can find something to fit in that hole and see if it releases by pushing up, this will be interesting. So this is the screwdriver I thought I'd reach for first of all. Um, but I seem to haven't. Right, so we'll push that in there, like so. Okay. I don't think that's the way you do it. <laughs> Raves, you should have researched this before you confused everybody on the internet. I'll tell you what, let me just get a socket on there and I'll do it the normal way I do it. Bear with me. So as the old saying goes, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. <laughs> Let's not quote business things, shall we? Um, so yeah, poking some up in the middle doesn't seem to, to release that. I'm sure there's a way of doing it, but to be honest, I've always just unscrewed it and let the oil come out. So that's what I'll do now. Now, somebody asked me, let me just come back a little bit. Somebody asked me last time I did this, what size that is. Um, now, I'll be honest, I think they said 32, but what I use is this. Um, good look if you can see that. Um, it's 11 something, 11 19ths Whitworth. <laughs> it comes from a really old socket set that I've had for ages and this is one of the smaller sockets in that set. Um, it's kind of for industrial use and lorries and things like that. So when I used to work on uh, lorry wheels years ago and, and taking lorry gearboxes out, this is a set I had. Um, so I've not, uh, <laughs> I've not got any idea what that is. Um, but it's 15 16 BS. Uh, I know BS is something else, and you probably do too. Um, and I think it's 13 fifteenths Whitworth or something. Um, so what that is in metrics, I have no idea. Sorry. Right. So when you get to this part, oh, let me get, oh, let me get in there. When you get to this part, it's really easy, um, but not when you're holding the camera. <laughs> so, oops. There we go. That sits on there like that, and then obviously you crack it open. Oh, and again, not easy with. A camera in your hand. Let me just get into a better position. Ah, great video, Reeves. Good content. Well done. See one nobody subscribes to your channel. By the way, if you do want to subscribe, hit that bell. Go for it. So that is on there, and crack it open. Right, I'm going to use two hands. This is getting ridiculous. Back in a minute. Okay, cracked it open. Uh, what well, didn't take a lot, but obviously with a camera in one hand and a wrench in the other, it's not ideal. Um, the torque spec on it, I've just noticed actually, is 25 newton meters. Um, which is, um, yeah, it's uh, snug. There you go. That's what the official one is, uh, snug. So you just undo that. I'm going to take my socket off now. And you do get some oil coming down, which is why the drip tray is here. And uh, obviously it's going to end up all over my hands. Maybe all over the camera. Always entertaining. Always entertaining. Right, let's see if I can get into a position where I'm not going to get too oiled. Okay, so screw it off counterclockwise as always and down comes the rain there you go <laughs> there it is so there's your wheel filter and there is the complaint I got last time about oil love my gearbox wheel wipe off don't panic right I'm gonna put the camera down because I need to get a rag There you go, so panic over, the oil on the gearbox has come off quite easily, uh, no bother at all. So we've now got an open hole where the oil filter used to be, so the next job is to obviously get the new one in place. So the next bit is getting out the oil filter. 
Um, not a particularly difficult job, in fact it's very easy. Um, again, probably not one handed. I've got a bag here so I'm going to put it in there and uh, dispose of it correctly because uh, after all it is a mineral oil and it doesn't need to be put into a hole in the ground. So literally you just, oops, bag flies away, you just pull it off just like that. It's as simple as that. That goes in the bag, that gets disposed of properly down at the uh, recycling centre and uh, what I'm going to do now is give all that in there a little bit of a clean up and we'll stick the new one in. So I've given it a bit of a clean up and my filter of choice, I always tend to go for these, is the, I'm not, <laughs> not sure how you say it, but mal I'll call it. Um, and what I'm going to do is open this live on camera, live unboxing, because it's always exciting on YouTube with live unboxings. And there you have one oil filter that's not black. And if my memory serves me right, because these are pretty good kits, yes, we have a new seal as well. Now use this. Um, you, you probably could use the, the original one twice, but why would you? You've got a brand new one. So that basically sits in there. And all you do, <laughs> not one handed of course, but all you do, there's a little tab, let's hope you can see it, there it is, a little tab just there. Give that a yank and it will come straight out. It can go either way, so be careful what you're doing. You'll see it's got a ridge on one side. Oh, actually these are, oh, no. I stand corrected. These ones look like they can go both ways, but obviously if you put it in that way down, you can't get the tab to pull it out again. So the tab goes upwards. Simple as that. Um, but that one seems to be slightly different. Anyway, right, let's give that one a pull out, push the new one in, and uh, we'll get uh, everything back together again. So we've got the ring in, um, obviously pulled it out, put the new one in, that was pretty simple. And all we do now is slip over the top. Now what you want to be listening for is the click, like that. Um, it will go to the point just before it clicks, but also make sure you give it that little bit more, click it in. Some of them go straight on, some of them take a little bit of force, but uh, you want that click. Always get that click. I mean, it's not the end of the world because when you put it into the engine block, it will push it in and click anyway. But yeah, you just don't want to damage anything, so it's best just to, to get it in firmly and in place before you put it back up again. Okay, over to the car and um, screw it back in place again. So, obviously now it's just a reverse of what we did in the first place to get it off. The filter goes up, into position. Now, my recommendation here is take it really, really steady and easy. If you cross thread this, you're going to be in a world of pain because Audi parts are not cheap. And uh, once it's cross threaded, it's no good. So take your time. Okay, if it feels like it's tightening up at any point in the first two or three screws, then take it off because you're starting to cross thread it. It should go on really, really easily. So you get it up there, gently tease it in place, and then you should be able to screw it on with your fingers almost to the point where it needs tightening up with a socket. Okay, it's as easy as that. If you feel any resistance whatsoever, don't carry on because you will be cross threading it. There you go. Top tip for you. So the next job is to get your bung back in. Um, obviously there's a few drips coming out of there still. It will for quite a while to be honest. Um, I put the bung back in when I was changing the, the oil filter. Um, let it out again, but uh, obviously the nature of the engine, there's oil galleries everywhere. There will be a few drips. Uh, it really doesn't matter. Um, some people say, yeah, you've got to flush your engine out, you've got to wait for it to stop dripping, blah, 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 blah. Um, no, you don't. No. <laughs> and my opinion might get criticisms, but I don't. Um, if you've got a few drips coming out like that, there's not a lot left in there, to be totally honest, and you'll probably be waiting all day for it to stop. Right, so again, that should be hand tight. Um, round about 25, 30 newton metres, um, or a uh, on the spanner. So we'll do the uh, on the spanner first. So it's a 19 mil. Now, you don't want to go crazy, that's the thing I said before. You just want to nip this up. Okay, so it's literally, uh, there you go, it's nipped. Do not go and hang off it because you will break it. It's an alloy sump, and once it cracks, you've got all those bolts in there to take off and you've got your gearbox bolts to take off and you've got a world of pain on your hands um, but on the positive side you can clean your strainer up 
So that's nipped up, just going to wipe the oil off that and then it's time to uh, top the oil up, put it back in the engine again. Okay, so we're at the top of the engine. Now anybody that watches my videos will uh, recognise this, did it a little while ago. Basically I've got an induction kit on this and I wanted to put the original cover on the engine. So yes, it's been hacked a little bit, but I feel it looks okay. I'm happy with it anyway, and it's my car, so that's all that matters. Hey, hey. right, cap off. So, this is obviously where they fill the oil out. Uh, fill the oil out, fill the oil up, and uh, ooh, no milkshake in there. My milkshake. No, no, stop that. Stop that, please. Uh, right, so that's where the oil goes in. Yeah, teaching your grandmother to suck eggs, I think is the, uh, the proper term. Um, so I'll go and grab the oil, I'll go and grab myself a funnel and we'll start topping up. So this is the oil I put in mine, um, recommended for this engine. Um, not cheap, but um, all the time I've been using it, never had a problem with it at all. Uh, it seems to last quite well. Again, as I say, I change it every 5,000 miles, um, but it seems to stand up to everything I throw with it. So that's why I stuck with it. So there you go, Miller's. Good stuff. Um, you can get it from OP Oils, by the way. Again, not sponsored by OP Oils. I pay for everything I've got. But, um, yeah, they seem to be the, the best deals around. Now, this is the bit where I get massive criticism. Because, yes, here's my funnel. So, let me explain. I have worked on cars for longer than I care to remember. I've had loads of funnels over the years. And I always find these, an old bottle cut off, works the best for me. And that works the best for me. <laughs> so before you start hitting the keyboard, it works the best for me. Now, I use this because it sits in there really snugly. Um, I've got other funnels, as I say, and they don't fit as snugly. And also the hole there tends to be a little bit smaller. Um, I know there's no gauze on there to catch anything that's going in, but let's be honest, it's brand new oil, what will be going in there. It's nice and clean before I start, and that works really well for me. So I'm going, to, I'm going to chuck about four litres in. I think off the top of my head this car takes about four and a half litres. So we'll chuck that four litres in and um, go from there. So I've stuck about four and a half litres in and uh, just going to check the oil quickly. Check it on the dipstick and as you can see we're just on the bottom level so it needs a little bit more yet. Now before you start saying, um, well your car's jacked up it's not level. Um, my driveway has quite a slope to it so when it's jacked up it is actually level. See, told you. But always for, for info this is why your dipstick has that range on it. Ooh, dripping oil. That's why it has that range on it because no car ever sits 100% level. No engine ever sits in an engine bay 100% level. So this is a guide. The most important thing is it needs to be above the minimum and below the maximum. Simple as. Right, as we're on the minimum, let's chuck a little bit more in. So again, let's quickly check the dipstick and let's see where we are. We're sitting about halfway at the moment. So at the moment, that's good enough. Now, I'm going to put a little bit more in and I'll tell you for why. Because A, we're at the, the minimum, uh, the mid, mid point. Let's start that again, shall we? We're at the mid point. <laughs> but also, at the moment, the oil's not gone around the engine. Okay, it's not gone into the oil filter. It's not gone around the galleries. Okay, nothing has happened. So I top it up to somewhere near the top level and then start the engine up just for a few seconds, let it get around the engine, let the engine or switch the engine off again and let the engine just calm down for a minute and then check it again. That is your true reading. Obviously don't rely on that completely, go and check it a few hours later or after you've used the, the car itself. But as a rule of thumb, okay, fill it up to somewhere near the top level when it's like this, start the engine 
and you'll find it will probably drop to about the midpoint and then top it up from there again. So I'm going to top a little bit more in and then we'll do that. Give it a wipe and do it properly. There you go, we're on the top level. Okay, that's enough. We're just going to let it sit for a couple of minutes and then check it again. Okay, that's sat now for two or three minutes. Let's pull the dipstick, give it a wipe down. Slam her back in, pull it out, and uh, there you go. That's what I mean. Now it needs topping up. So do not be fooled by topping it up and not starting the engine because you will need more in it. So let's put some more in. Spot on. And there you go, so that bit's done. All we've got to do now before it starts to rain, because it's looking a bit <laughs> and it's blooming cold, is obviously put the bottom panel back on again. So reverse of what we did in the first place and let the car down off its jacks and axle stands. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. all back on the ground again um, so as I say the axle stands which are there are for peace of mind they're not to hold the car up this is the way I use them it's to assure me that if the jacks start to lose pressure it will hit the axle stands and it will stop before it hits me and crushes me um, I have seen <laughs> as I say working in the industry for quite a few years not so much now but certainly years ago people um, getting crushed by cars and losing fingers by cars so, yeah, don't mess about with them. They are not toys. They are very dangerous things. So, that's it. That's the oil change done. That's an, well, that's good for another 5,000 miles now. Um, that leaves me with the rest of the day to um, do all the jobs I've got. I've got loads of jobs to do today. <laughs> Little things I've been putting off for a while. So basically, yeah, I need to, um, I need to get my finger out and get sorted out. Hopefully it's been uh, entertaining to people. Um, just one thing to mention before I go, um, on my last video when I did this, I said that what you want to do with the waste oil, that stuff down there, is basically dig a hole in the garden, bury it, and within five years you'll have an oil well. Um, <laughs> that was meant as a joke. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but it seems a couple of people did take it seriously. No, you don't bury it in the garden. You take it to the recycling centre, like sensible people do. Um, you put that stuff in the garden. Um, a, it will kill everything, and it will get into the water table, and it will spread. Uh, oil spreads terribly, and uh, <laughs> if, you, um, if you used to dig a hole and bury that in the garden, guarantee it will come back up at some point. So don't do that. That would just be silly. Get yourself down to the recycling centre. Every one of them now has waste oil containers you can use. And if you're not sure, ask them. 
so that is about it um, I don't think there's anything else I need to mention apart from whatever you're doing whatever your DIY job is if it's car home have fun um, just on one last closing note while I think about it the gloves I mentioned again not sponsored but the gloves I bought off uh, off eBay uh, which are let me just get them which are these um, yeah they held up really well look at that not a single rip uh, pretty comfy and they fit well as well they don't feel like they're um, they're great big slabs on your hands they're, they're quite nice so I'll be buying these again so Aurelia I think that's the way you say it bold um, large and I've got fat stumpy hands and they fit me quite well not many gloves do so very impressed um, very impressed indeed right guys catch on the next one oh don't forget hit the bell subscribe like all that sort of stuff it means a lot <laughs> <laughs> cheers one for the doubters And again, to my earlier point, why I don't use these funnels. They're so slow. And there you go, people. That is how you responsibly dispose of your waste oil. That will now be going down to the recycling center.